going on here. And before I even go any further, let me just confess and admit something to you guys. Myself, I am a total hip-hop head uh, and hymns only. Hip-hop and hymns, that's me, and k -Way. So, but these guys here tonight, they tore it up. Give them a round of applause. My ministry mate right there will tell you that I'm not one for contemporary or rock music, but seriously, I enjoyed it tonight. My toe was tapping, my, you know, I was doing a little bit of that. You know, I was even headbanging a little bit. So, um, I don't know if anybody else is doing that. Anyways, when Albert, or, yeah, Albert was telling me about this, burning me, the one thing that ran in my head was when I read in Luke chapter 24. I don't know if any of you have read that recently. But it was after Jesus Christ had died, was crucified, and was put in the tomb and rose again. And so there was a couple of disciples who were leaving Jerusalem. They had been discouraged because they only saw Jesus as a great prophet. They didn't see him as Lord and Savior, which is a really big problem. And if any of you today just see Jesus as a great man, a great person, uh, uh, a good way, a great way, and not the way, the truth, and the life, then there's a problem. You're going to be like these two disciples that left Jerusalem for, the, for Emmaus. So they were on the road to Emmaus. They were all, uh, I guess they were discouraged. They were reasoning with each other. And Jesus appeared to them, but they didn't know it. And so, Jesus said, hey, so uh, what's the matter with you guys? Why are you guys all defeated? <laughs> and so, these guys said, well, where have you been? Under a rock? Literally, he was, I guess, he was in the tomb. And so, he basically asked them to tell them what was going on. And they said, well, Jesus Christ, a great prophet, he was killed. He was crucified. And so, Jesus then says that they are slow of heart. Now, if you look into the original translation here, you, you, I guess the best way I can say it to you is that they straight had a whack heart. They were just, Durr. like, you guys don't get it. According to the prophets, the Savior was supposed to be killed. According to Isaiah 53 and so on and so forth. And so he said, you guys are slow of heart. And if you read the Bible, in Psalm 73, verse 24, it says that our heart and our flesh are going to fail. It will fail us. And so as Jesus continued to reason with them on the road to Emmaus, he, it came to a point where he basically revealed himself to them. And they said this. They said, when he was talking to us on the road, did our hearts not burn within us? And so when I hear the words burn in me, these are the words that come to me. Yes, the conviction of how I live for the Lord. Burn in me. Because the words burn in me should definitely motivate your lifestyle, your biblical worldview. And so this piece I'm going to tell you guys right now. Uh, has everything to do with what happens after the Lord burns within us. And it's all the result of, yes, what Albert ex uh, explained that, it's an experience of my childhood, my teenagehood, and, and even right now. And I don't know if any of you have ever heard this term, but I heard it a lot growing up, and I hear it now. Because once I was zealous for the world, and getting money, and getting respect, and, and even getting people to fear me, and while I was doing all this, I heard the terms, get a life. And even now, because I have laid my life down for the ministry, I hear from people who are co-workers or people I go to school with, you know, Miles, get a life. So here it is. Get a life, they told me, as if I wasn't breathing. Get a life, they said as if I wasn't alive. Get a life, Miles, because all you do is goof and screw around. Get a life, Miles, because the way your heading is bound to end you up in a cell or six feet underground. Oh, so you mean to tell me that if I try with all my might to get good grades and stay on trouble's way, I will then have gotten a life? 
Where if I exude all my strength to pursue all my dreams, my desires will become true? Is that how life is got? So you're telling me that in order to live life blissfully, I must regard higher education, sexual relations, and wallet inflation intrinsically as if life is lacking without the trinity of the American dream. Granted, I might not be as comfy as some, but the road to comfort will at one time entice me to compromise. Granted, I might not be as comfy as some, but the road to comfort will at one time entice me to compromise. But we'll get to that later because right now I've got to get a life, is what many will say when presented the gospel. But what's profoundly crazy is that's the same statement that many lazy saints make when challenged to preach the gospel. All of a sudden they want to get a hostile, like, excuse me, I'm busy. Listen, I'm not saying to grab a pulpit and visit hospitals, but consider the creed of alumni go Francis of Assisi. All your life preach the gospel and when necessary use words. You see, before I was a teen, my father taught me, son, words are the vehicles of your thoughts. See, you can't officially express yourself without the using of these words, lest you keep your audience guessing. So the issue that I'm stressing is that a gospel-centered life is the vehicle of your faith in Christ in which you are professing. Let's fast forward to the present. Get a life, they are telling me. Get a life, they are saying, as if I'm currently not alive. Get a life, Miles, because you go too far with this Jesus Christ. Get a life, Miles, because the way you're heading is bound to make you miss out on life. Take a look around because the party's passing you by. You kidding me? You mean to tell me that if I disregard the very essence of my ongoing transformation from a counterproductive, destructive, decadent citizen bent on showing the world he's angry to a loving, joyful, peaceful man who has traveled the world exclaiming about how Jesus has saved me. Also, that I can make time for friends at a party that's crazy. Are you crazy? Or how about that gym tan laundry or maybe baby making with just any lady or even that Dr. Phil stuff. Let's focus on you, Miles. Make time for you, call her the me slot. After all, it's only one life you've got. Also, Dr. Phil has the same mentality as these young money or young whoso, whatever guys. YOLO, live it up right. Listen, if that's the mentality you got, then it's a tragedy because that's damning blasphemy via idolatry in the sight of his majesty because you're securing your life and not having time for God. And look, I find that when I am in that state, I worship a false god who is seemingly nearer. And it's because I'm staring at him when I see me in the mirror. Look, if you are all you are living for, then I suggest you start serving a new Lord, the Lord. Because right now what you see is what you get. And if all you're serving is you, then all your blessings are present and accounted for. And that's whack because... Along with my treasures, my God is in the heavens where moth and rust cannot decay. Matter of fact, whom have I had above the Lord? And if he ain't there, then I'll stay away. And that's the point of this vapor we call life. Pushing on forward to reach the prize who is none other than the one who served what we endure on this earth. So where do you stand in light of endless, timeless life? Are you one who is storing up God's wrath on your head by rejecting Jesus Christ? Or is he your hope that when you look up to the sky, your redemption draws nigh? Step out of America and see that it's a rat race. Think outside the box of our selfish ambition and notice how it's square and lame. Because the rat's working hardest to achieve its dreams of eating cheese or driven by none other than an unceasing greed. And some of you, I don't care if we're all Christians in here, some of you might be thinking, well, what do you want me to do, Miles? Stop rocking a robe and shepherding sheep? No. But Christian, please, go back to your home, school, or business and with excellence. Show face. Because now there's a greater opportunity. And that's to show His grace. So there's more to our careers and our education. And that's to give God glory. And that's a glory in our achievements. And I don't care if we're all Christians in here because I just came back from Colorado and I had to rebuke a young adult Bible study pastor for smoking weed still. You might be thinking, so what, Miles? 
So what we get drunk, so what we get high, because we're young, wild, and free. Please, if that's the case, then go on and look forward to seeing that being 40 something years old like Snoop Leo Double G. Listen, if that's the party passing me by, then I have no problem waiting goodbye. Which brings me to the cross, which stands before me as a world that's not behind me. So now I say to you, them, and anybody that will listen to get a life because if we have, because we haven't had a proper breath until we've encountered God's word, which is from his breath. So now I say get a life because if we think for one moment that our life's godless, ambitious efforts will matter in eternity, then we'll stand before him on judgment day and not hear the words, if you have done it unto me, the least of, if you have done it unto these, the least of my brethren, then you have done it unto me. Enter into my joy, enter into my rest. You won't hear it. My friends, what are you living for? How is your time spent? Because according to Matthew 16, 25, if we have not laid down our whole lives, then all of our life's efforts will have become significantly insignificant. Matthew 16, 25, Jesus says, For if anybody desires to save his life, he will lose it. But if anybody loses his life for my sake, he will then find it. God bless you guys. Grace and peace. And so, there's one thing I wanted to acknowledge the Ninos in the house today. I learned in Haiti that, you know, the, kid, the kids who come to the adult functions need to get ministered to. You young ones in the front here, and any of you right here uh, in the room, I just want to let you guys know that Jesus loves you. And the Bible says that if you call on the name of the Lord, he will save you. So if you ever feel scared, hungry, or alone, call on Jesus. Uh, also, you guys, uh, I just came out with a mixtape called Old. It's for free. You can find it at neomusic, M-E-O, music.bandcamp.com. Totally free. And it, it, it includes some sermon jams from, you know, some great pastors. And, you know, you'll be encouraged to be bold for Christ. And, uh, strange and perilous day that we live in. God bless you guys.